11 o'clock Eastern Time as Newsmax TV continues its coverage of America Votes 2016, the New York primary. And in the Empire State, a decisive victory tonight for Donald Trump. The New York native, with 85% of the precincts reporting across the state of New York, has landslide numbers. 60% of the vote, Ohio Governor John Kasich in second place at 25%, and Texas Senator Ted Cruz bringing up the rear with only 15% of the vote. For the Democrats, former New York Senator and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton with a decisive win this evening. 85% of the Democrat precincts are in, and Mrs. Clinton has 57% of the vote as opposed to 43% for Democrat Socialist uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, your chance to call in and let us know what you think tonight as we continue to monitor these numbers and get a lot of different opinions. You can reach us by picking up your phone and calling 1-877-NEWSMAX. That translates numerically as 1-877-7629. Let's continue our conversation from Newsmax Washington, syndicated columnist and uh, economist at the University of Maryland, a fellow who knows about economics and business, a guy I could learn a lesson or two from and always enjoy visiting with, Peter Morisi. We appreciate you, Peter. Thank you. And uh, also on the telephone, one of my old constituents checking in from Arizona. We've got Rose on the line. Rose, welcome to Newsmax TV. Hey, J.D., it's been a long time. Yes, indeed. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering how long we're going to put up with all these lies. Uh, I've been a Republican all my voting life. I'm uh, well over 65, I'll put it that way. And my husband and I are both vets. Here's the point. We've heard for so many years, 20 years, that we have 10 million illegals in this country. I mean, it never went up or down, right? No, we're watching it. I don't care what anybody says across the country. We're close to the border. We're seeing the traffic. And it's all coming in. The only time they go close to the border is to wire their money out to their own homeland. When is enough? What number is it? Do we have to take in all of... Central America, South America, and, and when is enough? Our schools are exploding. Our taxes are going up. And Rose, you are making the case that I made a decade ago in my book, Whatever It Takes. And that's why I wrote the le legislation back when George W. Bush was president, the Enforcement First Act, saying you've got to enforce existing laws. And Rose, as you were pointing this out, we can talk about the fact that while the dominant media culture has talked about, quote, 11 million illegals, we know that over the years, many more have come in. We should point out that we are likewise joined uh, tonight via phone from Southern California by Michael Reagan, who you can find and follow on Twitter at Reagan World. And Michael, as you listen to my old constituent Rose lament what is going on with illegal immigration, you are in a border state likewise in California. California, where Governor Brown and the Democrat-dominated legislature has apparently decided that illegals, whether they are on the path to citizenship or not, should be accorded all sorts of rights, including voting rights. Oh, yes. I mean, I live in a state that's crazy. I tweeted the other day, we come here for the weather. We leave because of overtaxation, overregulation. Another tweet I sent out was, in California now, there's more takers than makers, and those makers are leaving the state for that exact reason that you discussed. Peter Morisi, we saw exit polling numbers from John Bachman just a second ago, where he said New York Republicans were asked about illegals. Should they be given uh, a path to citizenship? And I believe the numbers had it decisively in favor of a, quote, 
perhaps not path to citizenship, but a path to legalization uh, with fewer numbers for deportation. I always wonder about that. It's kind of like the poll question about uh, should you pay more in taxes or do you want your taxes cut? Sometimes I think that uh, the respondents are answering the way they think the questioner wants them to answer. Your take on what my uh, constituent Rose had to say from Arizona and uh, the whole challenge and the, and the real problem of illegal immigration. Well, we just can't round them up, put them on pickup trucks and take them back across the border because there's so many of them. I mean, if we had a national policy of moving them out of their homes, we'd have to erect concentration camps outside of well, airports. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, that is finish. obvious hyperbole, Peter. Okay. That, that, no, no, I, I, I appreciate I having mean, a last, difference in opinion, I, but that is, that is clear hyperbole. Okay. I'm, concentration I'm, I'm camps? I'm, I'm going... Well, I'm, I'm building, Go ahead and erect building, the straw uh, argument. Go ahead. I'm trying to build some scaffolding. Please bear with me. Uh, we, we would have to round them up and put them someplace. Call it what you like. We'd have to detain them in some way because you just can't move them all on Boeing 747s all at once. There aren't enough Boeing 747s. I think you'll grant me that. The real answer, though, is in having a federal policy that doesn't permit the states to basically have immigration policies of their own. For example, grant them driver's licenses, uh, you know, permit them to work, uh, to register their children in school and so forth. Uh, you know, I don't know why we provide highway monies to any state that grants uh, an illegal uh, a driver's license, for example. Make it so difficult to work here uh, be because we don't implicitly document them by giving them all access to all kinds of documentation through the states. I think that would make a lot of sense, but instead we have a very passive federal government uh, which permits an illegal alien to walk into a public school and register their kid without the school calling up and having the guy picked up. You know, that, that's a basic problem. As for the voting pattern in New York, this is one of those things where there really is a cultural difference between the Northeast which begins someplace around Richmond and extends on up through Maine and uh, out towards Buffalo and, and the rest of the country. There are so many illegal aliens that are working and prospering in, in the Northeast that you're talking about deporting your neighbor. And everybody knows somebody with whom they have personal sympathy. So they're very disinclined to say they shouldn't be given a path to staying here. And there is a sense up here that since they've been permitted to stay so long and now they have children here who are born here, anchor babies, many of them have matured and are in college now uh, or beyond, that it's really a problem that we should have taken care of years ago. Yeah, you know, that's and the so great lament, the coulda, woulda, shoulda. And Peter, I appreciate uh, your take that the Northeast I'm just explaining it. I, I appreciate that. And we got to get some more perspective here. That's why we're having discussion. Uh, and that's why I now turn to Michael Reagan. We heard from Peter a very rational, calm explanation. But Michael Reagan in California, uh, Jerry Brown is doing anything but being rational and calm in terms of rushing headlong to establish new rights for illegals to wit. Uh, illegals passing the bar, becoming attorneys, becoming part of the criminal justice system that they disobeyed. Uh, your well, take on that. Well, what you've got is you've got a one-party rule in the state of California. There's no Republicans. That's it right. doesn't really matter who wins the state of California in the primary. It's not going to go. It's not going to go conservative Republican in the general. It's controlled completely by the liberals in Sacramento. My God, we can't even find someone to run for governor here. I was having lunch with a member of Congress who asked me if I knew anybody who would put up fifteen hundred dollars to run against him. You know, for for his congressional spot because nobody will run against him. He can't do dinners, he can't do fundraisers, he can't do town halls. That's how bad it is in the state of California. But on the other side of that issue, the reality is I wrote an op-ed piece a couple of years ago calling where's the president who will go down to the Mexican border and give the corrupt empire speech. Because for, for the grace of God, if we were born in Mexico, if we were born there, we'd be doing ours hardest, best to get out of that country, too, and get to a country that is more free than where they live. So where's the corrupt empire speech? Where's the president, like my father, who gave the evil empire speech to give the corrupt empire speech and do whatever we can to save a country who should be a first world country, 
but they're third world because of the corruption. And another question I have to ask that's more than rhetorical is, where's our next caller? And the answer is, she is in Newark, New Jersey. She is Phyllis uh, on the line. And I'm sorry, there's been a change now to Lewis. Uh, perhaps I misunderstood the name on the phone. Lewis, I stand corrected. Lewis, welcome to Newsmax TV. Uh, good evening, J.D. Hi, Lewis. Uh, thank God for Newsmax TV. I'm from Newark, New Jersey, was a Democrat, been independent for the last 20 years. Two quick points. If Donald Trump's negatives are so high, I think around 60 percent, which MSNBC and, and CNN likes to quote, and Hillary's at 55, how can either one of them win? The two, the two only candidates that have positives or have very low negatives is Kasich and Sanders. And point number two, who really started the fight on the Democratic side? Barney Sanders is a gentleman. He doesn't play the nasty, political, slimy game. He tried to be an honorable man, but it was Hillary Clinton that started it with, where was Sanders when I was trying to do health care in the 80s? Right next to you, Hillary. And you even thanked him on audio. And nobody wants to play that up. Also, yeah, it's great. That video cannot, we've seen, Lewis, you're right. That is really something that's very striking. We thank you for your observations and the fact you're watching Newsmax TV. Peter Morisi, uh, it's interesting. If it comes down to a race between uh, Hillary and Donald Trump, is the campaign going to be, hey, you stink, and the rejoinder going to be, oh, yeah, well, you stink worse? Well, I think if it comes down to that, that Hillary wins because there are more registered Democrats than Republicans and people are just going to you know, vote their party choices and their philosophy. What you've got going on on both sides is absolute disgust with certain things. And uh, on the Democratic side, it's not disgust with Washington. It's disgust with they perceive to be continued perceived discrimination. Listen to her acceptance speech, their victory speech this evening. It was all about affirmative action, that was the word, although it was never spoken. Uh, on the Republican side, there's about half of the, the population is disgusted with Washington, wants something done about the core issues that the establishment candidates don't want to touch. Free trade, immigration, and, and so forth. And, and, Trump and the issue for confronting and, us and, right now, Peter, is that old four-letter word of time. But don't worry, time. Peter, you're coming back with me. It's just we have to step aside. want to thank Michael Reagan checking in from Southern California via telephone. There's more time in our coverage tonight. We're just going to step aside with this reminder to you. We'd love to hear from you. It was great to hear from Lewis up in Newark with nice things to say about Newsmax TV. Nice things, not so nice things. We'd love to hear from you. 877-639-7629. Stay with us.